Alright, so this is a quick tutorial video on turning USGS data into a topographical map so you could print it for a mirror 3D printer. So this is viewer.nationalmap.gov slash basic. Uh, you need the project search or anything. Uh, so just head over here. You can get to this page from the USGS site, but it's kind of convoluted, so you might as well just start here and type that into your bar. Uh, so for this tutorial, we're going to be looking at Mount Rainier up in Washington State. So you want to hit this little square right here, draw a rectangle, selects the area, you want to hit elevation products, we want one third arc second down. Um, you could go to one ninth, which is a little higher resolution, but you're not really getting any detail necessarily from it, because uh, you're kind of limited by your 3D printer and the size that you can actually 3D print, so uh, one third is a pretty good spot to be at. We're going to hit find products. It should bring up one thing. We add to cart, go view cart, hit download, and then it should download a TIFF file right here. Um, once that is actually downloaded, yeah, it should be pretty big, but once it's actually downloaded, you want to move it to some spot where you know where you can find it. You might want to rename it, but uh, the next step we're going to do is open up a program called QGIS. It's a free uh, geographical data sort of processor, I guess you would call it. Um, it runs kind of slow, but you know, it's free, so can't really complain. Um, so you open that up here, we hit this button right here. Um, hit this little dialog box right here on the side, it'll um, prompt you to find whatever file it is, so I have a file already hidden right there. Hit add. It brings it into frames, and then we're going to hit raster, extraction by extent, again this little side dialog box, uh, select extent on canvas, this is going to allow us to select our little area, just like that approximately. It'll fill in the dialog right here and everything, and then we want to save a temporary file, so save the file right there. Uh, we'll can name this uh, Mount Rainier TIFF, looks good, save, um, if, uh, and then it'll make sure you take note of where it's saved, it's kind of in the app data, so just be aware of that, it should be in users, and then we're going to hit run. So give this a little bit to process and it should save to that file location that we just named earlier. So task complete, everything looks good there. And then the next part is we're going to run over to this separate program. It's a good idea to close, the, uh, close that by the way because it makes everything run pretty slow but I'm going to leave it up to see if we can make this work. So next we're going to open up some software called uh, 3DEM. Let me bring that back up. 3DEM. This is the page. Uh, so we need to bring this up and the, way, the reason we're using this is we want to turn that TIFF file into an ASCII DEM file. So bring this up. It's going to say, yep, that's the right one. And then we need to uh, go grab that file that we saved. So going through the app data and everything to get to that output. So let me do that real quick. And we'll be right back. All right, so here it is, mountrainier.tiff. Open that up. It should bring up a file that looks like this. We're going to hit, yeah, why is that so high up there? All right, we're going to hit file and then save as USGS ask you to down. So we're going to move this over to the spot where we know again. So Dems, so this is going to be now here. And here. See? And then we're going to close this out. Make sure that's Yeah, looks good. We're going to close this back out and then we're going to head back to QGIS. 
So this might take a second to load. I'm going to come back. Oh, nope. We're already good. Okay. So I'm going to remove some of these layers. So actually, you can just remove that. We, we need to open essentially what we just saved. So we want to exit, close, discard the project. Give it a second to work. All right. Then we hit this. Bring up the dem file that we just saved. Ask you to dem file. Bring that dem. Add. Uh, it should prompt you to pick like a location. Um, I'm pretty sure you can pick anything here, but uh, you might as well pick the state that you're actually going to go into. Um, just in case, it might actually have some kind of effect in here. So let's look for Washington. Washington State. Yeah, whatever. We can just hit world. It doesn't really matter. Um, no, okay, all right, Oregon, Washington, there we go. So hit that, good. Um, don't hit anything, it's gonna add in the back. Just gotta give it a minute. There we go. So now we can close this window, and then here's our, our near part. So we're gonna hit, um, we're gonna head over here and hit plugins first, actually. So manage and install plugins. It's gonna open up the repository for this. Uh, I already have this installed, but I'm just showing y'all. So we need to find oh, there it is. Um, we need to get a plugin running called Dem to 3D. So that should just be Dem to 3D right there. So um, you just install the plugin. I'm not going to upgrade this right now, but install the plugin, get it working. Uh, I forget if you have to restart the QGIS program, but uh, I don't believe so. But after you get that done, we go over to Raster and hit Dem to 3D, Dem to 3D printing. And then, yet again, we are going to select the area that we want. So, some of your stuff before didn't have to be super precise, but be a good idea to get it reasonably close. And we're going to select the area again, something like that maybe. Yeah, it's a little bit off. Okay, so that looks a bit more like it. So we got our square, roughly. Uh, for this, normally put 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is recommended. This is one of the things that's limited by your uh, 3D printer effectively on the size of the model that you're actually printing. Um, also for this, 3D printer base, so um, the specifics for my 3D printer, I'm going to go with 150 millimeters, which is about 6 inches. So approximately 6 by 6, close enough. Um, you can add an exaggeration factor if you want to, but uh, I don't really want to. I feel like it's not super, a little bit disingenuous. But, uh, so this number here for height is a little more complicated. It's actually the point at which your uh, your model starts. So you want this relatively close to the lowest number, uh, to the lowest point number, in order to be uh, efficient with the amount of plastic that you're going to be using for your print. Uh, if you put zero, you're going to have like a really, you're going to have 829 meters relative here worth of space. So like if I put, uh, say, I, say I put zero, for example, export to STL, it says the model is going to be 50 five approximately millimeters tall. And that's more of an inefficient number. You, uh, for this, I'm gonna go to 800. If you go above this number, then it just starts cutting off the bottom part of your model, um, which you probably don't want. So 800, just a little bit below that, enough to where the base is still gonna be solid and everything. And this is just the lowest point, by the way, too. Um, if the lowest point only occurs at one point, then your base is going to be fine. But, uh, so yeah, numbers like that, we're going to hit export to SDL. Yep, numbers, uh, everything could take a, a little bit of time, so just bear that in mind. Uh, save it to just wherever, documents, etc. 
um, and let it build. So this is going to take a few minutes. We'll come back in uh, a bit when that's done. All right, so that's done. So we open up our file. We get something like this. So you can see what I'm talking about with the the base. So the base, since we chose a number pretty close to the lowest one, is pretty close, but it looks all right structural integrity wise and everything. So this is what we ended up with. You can actually see a little bit of the glaciation captured in some of the data. But yeah, now you can drop this into whatever uh, slicing software you have, like Ultimaker Cura, for example, and just drop it on your 3D printer and get printing. So I hope this was helpful to you guys, and uh, good luck.